problem with not having glasses. I don't know if everything is gonna be good. Oh, this is good. Oh my god. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sahar. If you've watched my channel before, which I'm pretty sure you haven't, my voice is a little bit rusty because I am sick. I've been sick for a couple days. So what better way to enjoy my sick long weekend than to tell you some ghost stories that I've been reading on Reddit. It is October and the ghost stories on there are getting much, much creepier and I have been reading a lot of these Reddit stories. Before we get started, if you do like these kinds of videos, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe down below if you'd like to support me and comment down below what you'd like to see next. I'm still trying to find my niche. I don't know what that is yet, so I'm just trying to enjoy making content and just enjoying my channel in general. So let's get started. This is from the subreddit Paranormal Encounters. It was a comment from somebody asking, can you tell me the scariest ghost experiences you've had? And this one in particular got me shivering. It was entered by Andrew from DC. I am 27 years old, male. I have been hanging around the local library for a while now. I've been in a dark place and it helps to just sit around and read. One of the librarians there, Sammy, always gives me books to read. I am into history, so he oftentimes gives me historical books. I am not into history, personally speaking. I was the worst in the history subject of my high school class, barely made it out of there. Recently, I walked up to him and he told me that he has a book, but I can't tell anyone about it. He really emphasizes the fact that I cannot show the book to anyone under any circumstances. Like, if I was in this position, I would probably not want to even look at the book, but curiosity? Curiosity kills the cat. I thought this was really weird, but I accepted. He asks me to follow him and we go to some sort of storage room. Yeah, no, storage room in the library. Uh, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. He hands me a book that has no name on the cover. All the cover contains is a small painting of a man and a woman kissing. Upon going home and reading the book, I realized that it is not a literal book. It's a handwritten journal from the 1800s. I was very interested. It was a journal of a man named Hans Elliot. For the first few chapters, it essentially just follows his everyday life. At some point, however, Hans faces crippling grief after the woman he was dating, Elizabeth, died. It's vague, but I believe she died of tuberculosis. I know tuberculosis was one of the highest causes of death back in the 1800s, so I'm not surprised there. While in his grief, he discovers a mask. The mask described as being completely orange with a smile and closed eyes. When he puts it on, he feels all his senses compromised. He suddenly cannot see, smell, hear, or feel anything. While wearing the mask, he sees a dreamlike hallucination of himself, standing in London, following a voice calling out to him. He follows the voice and encounters a mysterious man who apparently explains to him the concept of other dimensions. I don't know if you guys believe in multi-dimensions, but I personally do. I have a friend and he's like a nuclear physicist and he explained to me the possibility of multi-dimensions and I believe him, okay? I believe him. He awakens from his trance-like state and finds himself on the floor crying and laughing <laughs> at the same time. I've done that before. I have cried and laughed at the same time. Yeah, it was a quarter life crisis. The rest of the journal mainly consists of him documenting his experiences with the mask, as well as featuring poems, sheet music, drawings, paintings, and short stories made by Hans Elliot. I want to get to my unusual experiences, so if you have any questions about the journal itself, just ask me. Anyway, I was very interested. I googled him and found absolutely no records of an artist called Hans Elliot that lived in the 1800s. I totally thought that Sammy had fallen for some sort of misinformation, so I went back to the library. I explained to him what I found, and he suddenly smiles and says to come back tomorrow. Skipping to the next day, I return to the library. Sammy explains that the journal was handed down to him across several generations. He says that Hans is not a historical figure, but one of his ancestors. 
He then says that he has one thing to show me to get rid of all my suspicions. We go back to the same dark storage room, and to my amazement, he hands me a clay orange mask with a smile and closed eyes. It looked old and worn out. He tells me to keep it. When I got home, I kind of forgot about it, but finally decided to run an experiment with the mask. I grabbed my acoustic guitar, put my phone on record, and propped it up to where it was facing me. And then I just slowly slipped the mask onto my face. I started to feel my surroundings disappear. It was such a strange experience. It was like being dead, but still somewhat being alive. Other than being able to think, all my senses just vanished. It was like I was nowhere. I was just existing. I can barely remember anything after that. My phone ran out of storage and stopped recording. I woke up to find myself curled up on the floor, crying. It was literally weeks before I could bring myself to watch the video on my phone, but I finally watched it. I saw myself staring blankly at a wall for about five minutes, not moving a muscle. Then I lightly put my fingers on the frets of the guitar and started strumming it. I start singing. I can barely make out the words. I can make out me saying, Hans, oh Hans, several times. I can hear myself screaming the name Elizabeth at one point. And then I drop the guitar on the floor and start wailing and screaming. I don't remember any of it. I also noticed things. I heard the sounds of footsteps even though I lived alone. I heard someone speaking, but I can't make out the words. I perfectly understand what the mask is, however. It's a map. A map to other dimensions. I swear it is. It acts as a doorway between universes. Ever since I put the mask on, I've been seeing things. I've seen figures standing in the doorway of my bedroom. I've seen inhuman creatures. I've had very unusual dreams. I've heard people singing. I've seen a child version of myself in the backyard playing with his friends, but they don't acknowledge me. I've seen strange lights, and most disturbingly, I've seen a man staring at me wearing a suit. He has black hair, and he wears the same orange mask. Once, he took it off, and I took in every feature of his face. It was burned in my brain. Once, Sammy gave me two pictures of him. One was from behind, and another was him wearing the mask. I swear to God, I don't care if I couldn't see his entire face. The man in the photograph is the same guy I saw in my hallucination. So, that was a creepy story. I read it and thought it was so creative. I don't necessarily believe in this. I believe in the paranormal, but not so much experiences that are so um, literal, if you know what I mean. I don't really believe in what he had said, but I do believe that maybe there was some kind of hallucination involved. I mean, to each his own. This is definitely a, a beautifully written story, short story, and I thought it would be nice to share this with you, especially because it is October, and I thought it would be a nice, creepy story to share with you. The next story is another one from the same subreddit entitled, Haven't Believed in Ghosts Per Usual, and it was posted by Bicueles. I'm not sure how to pronounce this name, but um, yeah, let's, let's get into it. When I was a kid, I grew up in Mexico. In our house, there was an entity of a tall man, a moving shadow, always dark black, but a bit transparent, and never a clear outline of its human figure. It was more fuzzy. My older brother and sister saw it multiple times directly in frontal vision. The entity was always moving from space to space around the house. My brother was afraid of it and would run away from it. My sister was a tough, spicy person. She would yell at the entity, telling it to f*** off and leave her alone, for it would walk into her room at night. She said the shadow would hover away. I wouldn't see the entity, but I could feel a presence day and night inside of the house. My room was next to the living room, and I would often hear furniture being dragged at 3 or 4 a.m. 
Even neighbors would tell us they would see a silhouette through our living room windows, thinking we were home while we were all in another home in Los Angeles. My parents never believed us. Until one day, my great aunt, who was about 65 years old, came to stay with us for a couple of days. It was her first time at the house. She slept in my mom's bedroom. One morning, my aunt told my mom that the previous night, while she laid awake at night, she saw the bedroom door was being pushed open slowly. She turned to look and saw a tall man in the form of a black shadow walk inside the room. And then it dove or slipped under the bed like a piece of paper. It was then that my mom believed us. It always takes another adult to confirm what children have been experiencing as long as it's like something paranormal. Adults have a hard time believing people, but if it's kids that are experiencing these things, I would honestly believe them first. Have you seen all of the videos of these kids um, experiencing certain things, drawings, or like just experiencing things and you just don't understand what they're going through, what they're doing, what they're seeing? Creepy. There was other activity in that house. The only visible manifestation was the shadow man. It would come and go. Sometime years later, I saw it for the first time when I was 19. I went to use the bathroom around 4 a.m. As I walked toward the hallway, I saw the tall entity standing still, 20 feet away in front of me. It started moving towards me. I wasn't afraid. I was more curious and amazed. It hovered and shifted, moving forward like a glitch. Within two seconds, it was right in front of me, then went through me like smoke. I turned around and it was gone. I never saw it again. These remnants or spirits or ghosts do exist. There are stories worldwide that have been told for hundreds of years describing the exact same things. I tend to believe this story more than the first one because I actually have my own experiences with tall shadow figures. I do have a story time and I'll be linking that video up here for you to watch, but I was in the Philippines and it was very late at night and I was in my high school and we had some visitors come over from a different uh, school or from a different part of the Philippines and we were having this folk dance practice session and they looked up into the building uh, where we had our high school classrooms and they were like, who is that? Why is he up there looking at us? This is so creepy. And I remember it like it was yesterday because I looked up and I don't remember if I saw him anymore. It's such a long time ago. But I remember telling them, oh yeah, that's just the, the janitor. He comes up there and he cleans up at, uh, late at night. But I knew that they would lock the gates to that building. So no one is actually able to get up there. And I actually already knew that there were stories about this shadow figure from long ago. And I never even shared that with them. They experienced something totally independent of my storytelling. That's what made it even scarier because it was real. It was, it was somebody else and not me who was experiencing this. So yeah, it was kind of scary. So there you have it, two Reddit stories for you to think about when you're going to bed at night. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be posting more of this, especially because it is October. And I do enjoy a lot of these scary paranormal experiences. I do watch them all the time. True crime or paranormal. That's the, my favorite genre. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a like. Comment down below if you believe any of the stories or if you have your own experiences. I would love to read them and maybe share them in the next video. And if you'd like to support me, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!